The girl wakes up from a nightmare and wakes her mother up. Her doll, Olive, is scared. The doll ordered them to hide because the breathers had found them. Mom is not happy. They had agreed not to talk about these creatures anymore. Besides, Dad is protecting their peace. They walk through the dark corridors to check on Dad. Wearing imaginary glasses, Dad tells them how many times he's completed solitaire during his shift, and as long as his mischievous daughter's little footsteps haven't sounded, no creature has dared to disturb their peace. But the girl is worried, so she climbs the stairs to check the hatch, then she signals to her parents that everything is fine. Later Claire turns on their own son, and the girl is trusted to make a mark. She counts them. They hide 301 days, that's the number of days they've spent underground. Mom suggests eating beans but Zoe wants peaches, Claire has to retrieve the can of peaches. While the parents are busy fixing the water pump, Zoe opens the can, and it's empty. There's a hole in the side, someone managed to open the tin and take out the fruit. The family begins to check their supplies, and almost all of them are empty. People wonder, who could have teeth like that, and how did the unknown intruder get inside? Claire notices the ventilation window, breathers won't fit through it, but a rat easily could. The girl has to eat beans, which irritates Zoe, who is already upset. Besides, her only friend is Olive. Ray objects. Aren't they friends? They can't say they have nothing. After all, they've found shelter just when they needed it most. They got food, a home, a life. They might be the only survivors, so every mark is truly a miracle. And food will help them survive one more day. If the girl eats her beans, they will set off on a journey. Later, they play with a model of their town, closing their eyes and remembering their favorite places. A cafe and homemade ice cream. Zoe imagines eating it, and smiles. But the parents aren't in the mood for smiles. They need to figure out where to get food. Ray is ready to go to the surface, but Claire reminds him that they are still being wanted. And although Ray is willing to do anything for their daughter, Claire no longer believes in miracles. Claire engages in math with her daughter playing a homemade game. The girl asks questions, wondering if they are really the only ones left. Claire suggests taking a look on the surface. They pull out a homemade periscope through the hatch and survey the surroundings, the school, the playground, and no one. Dad was right. They are the only ones left. Claire reassures her daughter. They've hidden the door well, which means no one will find them, and their friends have probably managed to hide as well. At that moment, Zoe sees a rat and runs to her father. They are ready to deal with the thief, but the rat escapes. The family chases after it, and Claire kills the animal, but in the heat of the pursuit, Ray knocks over a lamp, which starts a fire. Moments later, the model of the town ignites. The adults try to put out the emerging fire, but the water pump malfunctions again. Nevertheless, the parents manage to extinguish the fire, but Zoe is lost in the darkness. They find their frightened daughter under the bed. The breathers are sure to see them, because the smoke from the fire is coming out of the grated window. The family goes back in time. Mom cooks food, and Dad hugs her. Claire talks about Zoe's friendship with the neighbor boy Joey. Ray is worried. He doesn't like the boy. And then the girl notices the neighbors, hurrying somewhere. The parents go outside and when they ask Joey, he tells them about a virus that is affecting people severely. The family leaves, advising them to leave as well. People see the town's population hurriedly dispersing. In the kitchen, a fire alarm goes off. The bacon in the pan is burning. And now the smoke rises to the ceiling and exits through the ventilation window. The family hopes that, on the surface, it's dark, and no one will spot the fire's traces. Ray raises the periscope, and the smoke is clearly visible. Claire is frantically searching for a solution. Ray tries to calm his wife. Even if they see the smoke, by the time they reach this place, it will have dispersed, and they won't find the entrance to the shelter, but it doesn't comfort her. They will realize that someone is here. Claire touches the burnt wood. She leaves ashes. Zoe understands, they are no longer hidden. Claire suggests going up and clearing the scattered ashes. She insists that her daughter closes the door behind them and absolutely does not open it. The girl is against it. She can help too, but the mother remains adamant. Ray opens the hatch and they emerge to the surface. Zoe is left behind. Hugging her doll, she persuades herself not to be afraid and pulls out the periscope. She sees her parents and behind them, figures. The girl tries to warn the adults but they don't hear her scream. Zoe rushes to the stairs, but her parents are nowhere to be seen. The girl runs around in fear and bumps into her mother. Claire is furious. She had asked her to stay downstairs, but Zoe cries out that she saw breathers. And then, from the walls opening, deer come rushing out. The animals run past the people. Ray laughs, it's just deer. But Zoe points out that they looked scared, and Claire supports her daughter. They were running away from something, or someone. They need to get back to the shelter urgently. 
The people descend, leaving the burnt model town on the surface. But once they are in the shelter, they hear footsteps above. The frightened girl is crying and Ray comforts her, showing her a surviving toy car. With it you can go anywhere. The little one wants to go to her bed. Her father closes her eyes and tells her how she finds herself in her own room and in her own bed. He tucks her in with a warm blanket, hugs her toys and kisses them goodnight. Then he looks at the ceiling where glowing stars hang, and the room is always bright even when she's asleep. Zoe calms down, but outside there's noise, dust falls from someone's footsteps, then there's a knock. The people hold their breath, and suddenly, Zoe notices that her doll has gotten caught on a pipe. The string snaps, and the doll starts talking. Her father dissects the toy, cutting out the talking device while Claire covers her daughter's mouth. The noise from above subsides, but then there's a strong impact. The chains holding the hatch start to break. Ray, with incredible effort, pulls off the pipe to use it to support the door. But their efforts are in vain. The hatch opens. Ray strikes the gap with the pipe, and the family manages to close the hatch and wedge it with the pipe. The pounding from above ceases. Anxious people sit and listen to what's happening. The walls begin to shake. Apparently, reinforcements are coming for the attackers. They find themselves back in the past again. The family is in a car. Dad points out a landmark. They'll pass that tower and be safe. But oncoming cars honk and rush in the opposite direction. The people can't understand anything until they reach a blocked road. A voice from a helicopter announces that a quarantine has been declared and they cannot leave the city. And back to the shelter. Zoe understands the breathers are already here. The hatch opens. The family runs through the corridors. Claire sets a curtain on fire and they block the entrance. The door is blocked but there's a ventilation hatch. Claire is the first to crawl out and pulls Zoe with her but Ray can't fit through the narrow window and dislocates his shoulder while trying to get to the surface. He almost succeeds but suddenly he is pulled down. Through the smoke the woman and the girl see movement below and realize that their father is fighting someone. Zoe rushes downstairs but Claire grabs her daughter and runs away. They hurry through the dark forest and reach a road clogged with cars. From above they hear helicopter sounds. They are covered by a net, and in the next moment they are surrounded by people in protective suits. These are the breathers. In the past we see the day when they tried to leave the city. Standing on the road, they see military planes circling above their town, and in the next moment they burn it to the ground. Claire is in shock. They were ordered to return to the city. The survivors try to escape. The family runs into the mountains. Nearby is a school, and there's a shelter there. The planes are incinerating those left on the road. They manage to reach and descend into the bunker before the planes strike from above. People inspect the shelter. It's well prepared. Plenty of food and even toys and a doll. Ray is sure it won't last long. What happened was a mistake, and then Claire shows her hand. She cut herself. If the virus is airborne, they are infected. Mother and daughter are back on the road under the net. Their blood is taken. Claire pleads for them to be released. They are asked questions. How long have they been in the shelter? Have they had contact with anyone? And after hearing the answers, they express regret. But the men raise their weapons. They have orders. The woman starts to transform and thrashes in the net. Suddenly blood spurts from the soldier's neck, and Ray appears behind him. But he looks hardly human anymore. He attacks the soldiers and scatters them. The survivors open fire. The commander reports that four of his subordinates have been killed, and they've captured two targets. But while this battle was going on, Claire and Zoe escaped. The military is searching for them. Zoe hides in a car. Suddenly she sees Claire moving at inhuman speed, scattering the pursuers. The woman orders her daughter to run. A soldier is ready to shoot her. But then Zoe rushes at the soldier. She also transforms and is willing to kill anyone with beastly cruelty. Her mother stops her. She returns to her normal form and asks Zoe not to kill the man, but the daughter attacks her mother. Claire shouts the rule they memorized in the bunker. She can stop. The girl stops and regains her senses. Zoe tends to her mother's wounds and they leave, leaving the soldier behind and he starts to mutate. They find Ray, who has also returned to his human form, but he is dying. The family says their goodbyes. The father asks his daughter to embark on a journey and dies. Claire hears a helicopter and grabs Zoe. They need to hide. Soon they find an entrance to a storm sewer. The girl wakes up from a nightmare. The breathers are close. Her mother tries to calm her, but Zoe is sure she heard something. And suddenly, from the darkness, the neighbor boy with whom Zoe was friends emerges. He leads them to an underground shelter where the infected from Kingsville have found refuge. They are different now, but it's normal here. 
Zoe sees the sun, that means it's been 302 days. Claire closes the hatch behind her. For this genre it's a very good thriller with a slow-paced development and an unpredictable ending that completely flips the plot and shows the viewer that they've been rooting for the wrong side all along. It's a very illustrative situation when you make judgments about what's good and what's bad without having all the information.